this little Victorian girl. It just kind of freaked me out a little bit that I was like, white? Do you think past life me was racist and like would hate that I'm brown right now? <laughs> I was killed, like I was strangled, I was stabbed, tuberculosis. Maybe this is why I always feel like I'm going to die young. Hi guys, my name is Sabrina, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about our past lives. Oh, by the way, there's a lot going on. I recently dyed my hair again. I was going to post a video about it, but it just seemed so boring. I, I literally, like while I was editing it, I couldn't sit through it. So I know no one else would want to sit through me bleaching and dyeing my hair again. I already have so many videos of myself doing that. Um, my symptoms crooked. So if you've been on TikTok recently within the last few weeks, you've seen a lot of people do the Brian Vice. I think that's how you pronounce his name, past life regression session where you kind of meditate and he guides you through meditation, I guess, so that you can go visit your past life. I was a little skeptical about this. I am kind of spiritual. I do believe that there's more to just like this physical life. It would be kind of sad if it were. And you know, like the whole thing with like, energy can't be created or destroyed. It has to go somewhere. And I feel like even though a lot of our reality just seems like electrical impulses in our brain. There's probably more to that that we just like don't understand. And also like, I've had some supernatural experiences. I know people are hesitant to believe ghost experiences, but like for some reason my family, we just have some sort of like connection with like ghosts and like, the sixth dimension if you will um if you want more stories about that um let me know in the comments and i'll try to compile a list of ghost stories from my mom my grandma my sister me my family in general but anyways let's talk about my experience with the past life regression i actually don't meditate a lot but i probably should because this was actually like a really calming experience i thought it would be a lot scarier just because you know i got some mental illness in it up there but actually it was like really peaceful it starts off with him saying okay it's time to relax get yourself in a comfy position close your eyes so i was on my bed under my fuzzy blanket and i just laid there in like a what is it in yoga like the corpse pose where you're just like like your arms are literally like this and you're just laying there he's like okay just breathe in and out focus on your breath imagine all the tension leaving your body and like i really i could feel all of my stress and tension coming out and then he's like okay here's a healing light let it go through your body and i just think that this was something to help you relax more and become more open to the universe or whatever. One of my fears with doing this was that if I go into my past life, like it'll be something traumatic because I just, I know that's my luck, but he's like, okay, imagine this beautiful garden. I'm gonna try to describe to you what I saw in my mind. It was like, there was this golden light over like this sort of cottage core type cottage where there's just all these natural wild plants and like these beautiful flowers um, and just birds and bees flying around and I was walking through it in a flowy white dress and there was one of those um, sun chairs those like chairs you would see by the pool but like in the nice cloth ones where you could just lay down and he's like imagine yourself laying down in this garden and i was like you know what yeah i'm gonna do that i'm like a step ahead of you king so he tells you like if you ever feel stressed if something ever feels too painful for you just imagine the garden and it fucking worked because i will get into that later so the first thing that he asks you to recall is a childhood memory um <laughs> this is like a little personal so um i used to live in huntley illinois which is like a two hour drive from chicago it's like rural illinois there are huge houses and huge backyards you know there was this one year uh, when i was a kid it was maybe like 2008 2010 something somewhere there um where it there was a huge blizzard it was like so much snow that we got a snow day for like three or four days because there was just too much to like plow out of the way and put salt down um we had fences in the backyard and the snow like literally went over the fences that's how much snow there was my brother and i were like hell yeah let's do this i either had on a purple or a green snowsuit because those were the only two i 
owned at that time and I think my brother was wearing a blue snowsuit. I literally like imagined us as kids. I could see it vividly and usually for me it's I don't know why I just have a really hard time thinking about childhood memories. <laughs> I don't know if it's like my trauma or my mental illness, but it's just hard to recall these sometimes. So I had like a little bit of trouble trying to recreate the scene. Basically, what my brother and I did is we took my mom's like big ladles or like kitchen spatulas and we went out into the backyard and we digged snow tunnels. Like we were trying to connect them. Um, <laughs> because that's how tall the snow was um, and it was really fun and we also made these huge snowballs um, it was like at least three feet off the ground that's how big the snowballs were when we went inside we took off our snow suits and put them in the dryer and then we drank hot chocolate and <laughs> I also I started tearing up and crying a little bit at this part um, just because if you've seen my previous videos, you know that my brother passed away um, when I was 16, I think. So it's been a few years, but it was like sad. I just felt like nostalgic and sad that I could never experience that again. So then he's like, okay, time to move on. Float above the, um, the scene that you're seeing right now. So I did. It's like I saw a bird's eye view of my house and the backyard and there was just snow everywhere and I like saw both me and my brother like rolling snowballs still and it was so cute and fun so then he's like okay time to go back even further to when you were in your mom's stomach in utero if you will at this point like i my body already felt relaxed but at this point i felt like compressed like i feel like i felt like i was both floating and that my blanket was pushing me down so it literally like i felt like i was in my mom's stomach <laughs> it was so warm it was so comforting at this point if you are um going to do this um just like a warning the audio and the music kind of goes wonky and it sounds really muted and i think that's to mimic how the sound would be while you're in your mom's stomach you know it kind of freaked me out a little bit i had to kind of imagine myself in the garden again because i got kind of scared because i thought something was actually wrong with my hearing but that's just the audio then he's like okay it's like it's nice in here it's warm you're comforted and then okay time for birth now and i'm like oh shit i'm going through this tunnel and he's like even if this isn't a real memory just pretend like imagine it let yourself imagine these things and don't analyze it just do it and it was kind of like that scene in that what's that game what's that that video game with norman reedus with the like baby and then in the trailer it was going through 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 the the vagine you know and then like i came out and i saw my mom and dad in the hospital room um i didn't see any nurses or doctors though it was just literally like my mom and dad i don't know if it was real it doesn't really feel real to me i'll explain more about that later but i started crying again this time a lot harder than i did before with the childhood memory i don't know like he said something about you just have unconditional love from your parents right now <laughs> Like, it was just the unconditional love that made me feel like, oh, they love me. And then I started crying. I don't know. You can you can analyze that on yourself. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so then he said, okay, float above that scene now. So I did. And then he said, there's a door in front of you that has a beautiful warm light behind it. And I want you to walk through it. So I did. Before even opening the door, I already saw a glimpse of my past life. It was so weird. And I was like, maybe I'm just tricking myself to believe that that's what my past life was. But it just kept coming and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. I'm not gonna push it. I had a bird's eye view of this school or church courtyard that had an orchard with a fence around it. And right next to the fence was this little Victorian girl who had red hair and extremely pale skin and she was like tiny she was so skinny um and she was wearing a black dress like like one of those victorian dresses where there's like a lot of details and like poofy um and then he's like okay now go into the body and i was like oh shit i'm her now everything around me was just like really gray so i don't know if the dress was actually like black or whatever or if my shoes were actually black but he was like look at your feet what do your shoes look like and i was like oh 
it's like black and it looks old timey i don't know it's not like she was wearing sneakers it was like dress shoes like sandals like nice shoes <laughs> then i looked down at my hands and i was like tiny 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 i was like a child um i had like tiny pale gray hands um i don't know it just kind of freaked me out a little bit that i was like white because <laughs> like, i'm not i'm brown i'm assuming i was in england or something because it was so gray. <laughs> it was like, in all of the visions I had in my past life, it was so gray. And you know, it's like always rainy in, in England, I think. Or at least there's not a lot of sun. So then Brian said, okay, look around. Are there other people around you? And I was right next to what I'm assuming was either my mom or a teacher. Um, she was wearing a huge like dress and it had one of those big butts, you know, like Victorian dresses, they have the butt. If I'm getting my era's wrong i'm assuming it's victorian but I, like i don't know shit about fashion so if i'm wrong like correct me but i'm pretty sure it was victorian because it just wait okay i'll get into it but like she didn't really have a face and i think she either her hair was like up and like styled nicely or she was wearing a bonnet and there were also other children around me like running past me to go back into the school or the church um but i couldn't really see their faces they were also wearing sort of old-timey clothes, like Victorian era clothes. He's like, okay, time to jump later into your past life. So then immediately I had a vision of a wedding. Again, at first I was like, mm, maybe this is just what my brain wants me to believe. Again, I just didn't analyze it, I just went into it. I was getting married in a church to a guy with brown hair and a square jaw. I couldn't really see his face that well. It was, it was like blank. Oh, and the girl in the previous uh vision i guess she had big eyes like big green eyes i'm wearing a huge like white dress um it was a very formal wedding it was in a church it was very silent i, I don't i didn't even hear anything about the ceremony and then Brian's like, okay, it's time to go to your, the end of your life. And this is what I was kind of scared of. It's like, I didn't want it to be painful. I saw other people say that like, oh, I was killed. Like I was strangled, I was stabbed by someone. And I didn't want that to happen. So at the end of my life, I was in a hospital bed. Um, the hospital had like white walls and brown floors. And I was next to my husband. I was even skinnier than I was in the past visions. Like, my my cheeks were so hollow i literally like i really was about to die um and i was dying of tuberculosis so that's why i think this was in the victorian area because i'm pretty sure that's when like tuberculosis and consumption was a big thing um so yeah i was i was like coughing a lot and i looked so emaciated um my husband was next to me holding my hand and the sad part was is like from the wedding scene to the hospital scene it doesn't look like we aged like at all my husband was still very very young he still looked the same and i also looked very very young i was just skinny and emaciated because i had tuberculosis so it was really sad i was like coughing up blood and stuff you know going into this i didn't even have a lot of knowledge about victorian era or tuberculosis after the session was over i googled like wasn't tuberculosis a big problem in the victorian era and then they google said yes unless i read it wrong like i didn't have that knowledge in my brain so that's why i really think that this was real because I, I barely know anything about tuberculosis and I'm so bad with history and like the years. I don't, I, <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. And yet I still could, I still in my brain, it, it, it showed me that. And so Brian was like, okay, so like now that you know how your past life has died, think about how this might relate to your current life. And I was like, immediately I was like, <gasps> Maybe this is why I always feel like I'm going to die young. <laughs> it's like so bad, but like ever since I was in middle school, I never really planned for the future because I always think like, oh, I'm gonna die young. For sure I'm gonna die young. Like I, I'm not gonna like off myself because I'm too scared to do that. In my brain, I just feel like I'll die from like a car crash or like a shooting or like I have some sort of cancer I don't know about and that is just growing inside of me or like I'll have a stress-related heart attack and I'll just die young because it happens. Like 
there are stories about college students just dying because they're so stressed out and like if you've subscribed to my channel for long enough you know that at the end of every semester i get so stressed that i have some sort of sickness some weird symptoms like there was uh the most recent one was i had a lot of chest pain because of stress and i found out it's just like the muscles constricting because you have stress um there was one semester where I, ha I broke out into a bunch of hives cancer runs in my mom's side of the family and heart attacks run on my dad's side of the family so like i'm just i'm just waiting for it to happen <laughs> It sounds so bad, but like literally my past life looked like she could be in her 20s. She was so young Do you think past life me was racist and like would hate that I'm brown right now? <laughs> then he said, okay, it's time to float above your body and leave this life Oh, every time I floated by the way when I saw that door I was like in, in space I was in the universe and I could see like little glittering stars around me and I was just it was silent It was all black. It was just I was floating in space. He said, okay, it's time to meet your protector your guardian angel whatever you believe in like it's time to meet them it was a huge guardian angel she was like 10 times my size she had huge beautiful white wings if you are like christian or catholic and have ever owned like little angel ornaments or like little figurines it basically looked like a generic version of an angel she was sitting here i'll back up a little she was like floating and sitting in the air with her legs behind her like this and her arms like this and she had huge wings coming out to the side and she had blonde hair blue eyes she was very pale i tried hard to not imagine my guardian angel as like you know one of those realistic looking angel with like 10 wheels and like a billion eyes because that would have just freaked me out so then brian was like okay it's time for them to speak with you you can ask them any question you want um get answers from them whatever she told me that um my brother who passed away when i was 16 is safe and he's okay that my grandpa who also passed away is safe and okay and she also said that my grandma was safe and okay and i was like hmm, my grandma's still alive um but that day uh yesterday uh, my grandma has leukemia and yesterday was her bone marrow transplant that's what my guardian angel said, so she better be okay. Otherwise, I got a bone to pick with my guardian angel. Actually, I forgot to talk about this, but the entire time my body just felt- I felt like I was floating the entire time, even though I was pressed under my blanket and against the bed and my hands were like glued to my side. Like, I didn't move this entire time. At the point where it went from the in utero stage to visiting your past life and seeing the door, my eyelids kept twitching like it kept twitching to to open i guess like i had to keep them closed and they just were like twitching like crazy it freaked me out a lot now that i've let it sit with me for about 24 hours whenever uh sorry so you know how like you have a vivid dream but when you think back and try to remember it it's like your brain registers it as a dream and not just like a real life memory. When I now think about what I experienced during this past life regression session, like my brain makes it feel like this was a real memory that I experienced that was actually like part of my life. I don't know how to explain it, but like it feels so real to me now. Like in the moment while it was happening, I was just like, mm, I don't think this is real. It feels really fake. Like I think I'm just like gaslighting myself and forcing myself to believe in this because I want it to work. It feels like I actually truly experienced it and it's part of my life now. I don't know how to explain it. I'm so bad with words. So yeah, that's basically my past life regression experience. It was wild. I kind of want to do it again just to see like if i can see another past life ryan the dude did say that you kind of have to do this multiple times to sort of train your body to get into it i also saw other people say that if you don't see anything that could mean you're a new soul like you don't have any past lives like this is your first life on earth let me know what you think in the comments do you think this is a real thing or do you think that 
my brain just gaslighted me into thinking that this was all entirely real. I really truly believe this was real. Let me know if you try it out for yourself and let, leave it in the comments what happened to you. Follow me on Instagram at sab.grey and Twitter at sabgdrui. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!